Hi, everyone, and welcome to this USN Travel Talk. And this is a talk we do with, uh, lately we've been doing it with Destination Asia, our DMC in Asia, who has 11 offices around the various countries. And um, on Tuesday, I talked to China. And today, I'm going to talk with Michael from Hong Kong. And um, we are going to talk a little bit of how things are in Hong Kong, you know, what's has come out of the pandemic and, uh, you know, try to look in the glass bowl and see what's going into the future. I see we already have quite a few coming on board with us. That's really nice. And of course, those who haven't seen me before, I'm Christine and I'm doing these travel talks on a regular basis. So we are talking, like I said, now with the Asian countries. We're going to do some updates later on when borders opening up. And then um, we do different countries and different hotels and destination management companies like this. But Michael, welcome and thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Chris. Good morning all from Nordic and good afternoon to Chris in Dubai. Yes. <laughs> and Hong Kong in the afternoon <laughs> and as well. Good evening. And good evening to, to Hong Kong. <laughs> to Hong Kong, yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you actually for everyone joining my session today with an update of Hong Kong. Uh, I understand we are all restricted to, interna to international travel for almost one year. I really hope with the kick of the vaccination program uh, in most of the country, we can really see each other soon. All right. Yes. Yeah, now, sure. um, today I'm going to start with some figure which will able to give everyone a good picture of what's going on in Hong Kong uh, in yeah. handling of our COVID. So uh, as well as some social distancing Exactly. Yeah. Michael, you. can I just ask you, um, you're, you're actually, you know, in Hong Kong, there's a lot of expats, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people moving and English, mm -hmm. of course, this has been in English, but you've been, you're born and um, yeah. lived in Hong I'm, Kong all your life. You know, I born here and my parents, they came from China, I born here, uh, but I live in Australia for eight years. Hmm. All right. So just try to travel and experience different kind of life. But obviously, um, they don't really have as many good food as Hong Kong. That's why I decided to move back. You know, <laughs> Come back again. So much, you know, especially <laughs> you know, like 10 p.m. in the evening, you still can walk out anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Shops are not not at the moment, of course, but but no. in normal days, you know, yeah. anytime, any shops, you can have a bowl of noodles, you know, yeah. fried rice, seafood, everything. And that they they actually they won't be closed until like 11:30 p.m. Oh, so it's too. a lot of like excitement, uh, but yeah. this is different kind of life, you know, like in is, Australia. It yeah, yeah, it, it will it be is. more relaxing. Here will be packed and then you need to rush every day. So it's yeah. two different kind of life. <laughs> but it's just nice to actually that you have uh, someone who knows Hong Kong very well. Yeah, I would yeah. say. Native yeah. born and I study here. Okay. Uh, so so yeah. But um, how long have you been with Destination Asia then, uh, Michael? Oh, actually, uh, uh, almost two years. You know, I've been oh. moving back from Australia. Yeah. And then uh, I, I'm trying to look for something, you know, I previously doing in Hong Kong. I've been in travel agent for more than like 30 years. Yeah. But back to Australia, I'm doing nothing but fishing yeah. and traveling a lot. <laughs> so, oh, nice. <laughs> so this is life. So yeah. by the time I come back to Hong Kong, uh, I decided maybe I should work a little bit more uh, yeah. to save some more money so that I can go back to Australia again, maybe you know, yeah. a couple of years later. Yeah. So uh, I I am doing uh, what I've been doing before. So I joined Destination uh, two years ago yeah. uh, as a general manager of Hong Kong uh, office. Yeah. So it's nice. But okay. we're coming over to the current situation. And of course, everybody is asking and thinking about how is cases? I think yeah. that's, the, that, that's the only question sometimes yeah. we have when we wake up in the morning. How many cases is it? Yeah. But I think it is fair to say that the COVID virus in Hong Kong is under control by just looking into the numbers. Uh, mm -hmm. for the, like, like, let's say for the past week, we only have around 15 cases per day. So that's a very minimum number if you compare to the other part of the world. Yeah, definitely. Um, and even so far, the total infected cases, accumulated in infected cases, is just over 11,000 cases with slightly over 200 people um, die. So that's okay. not a huge that's, number. 
No, no, no. You're very good on numbers. I would say even if comparing to Scandinavia <laughs> as well, we have more numbers than that. And for me here in Dubai, we also have more numbers, even though I would say here it's been fairly good on the death toll as well. I think we all in, in the same area, but you're definitely on the, on the lower situation. But so, but, so how I'd, how has the government been doing then with restrictions? Yeah, because, very cautious, actually. Um, I, I yeah. think one of the reasons that we have such low number is uh, everyone is aware of the hygiene, uh, hygienic needs. So that's why yeah. it's like a compulsory that we all wear masks whenever we yeah. go out in any public area. So yeah. you will be fine without a mask. And that's mm. why uh, I think this is one of the main reasons we can keep the number uh, low, mm. as well as we are still enforcing some social distancing measures, uh, such as minimum, I'm um, sorry, maximum four person per table yeah. for dining. And the dining hour will be finished by 10 p.m. every day. But the purpose okay. is just to minimize people around in public area. Yeah. And even for like walking along and no social gathering is allowed, at maximum four person for public gathering at the moment. Okay. So you can so, maximum be four people outside together, yeah. basically. So we are tough. So no wedding for wedding, uh, only yeah. 20 person maximum. And wow. then you still need to split into five tables. If you recall, I've mentioned only four person <laughs> per table, it's allowed it. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I think the government is is really doing something, try to clear the number so yeah. that the border can be reopened to China. Okay. Because we yeah. are still behind when comparing to the number in China. And that's why yeah, because when China yeah, because I think when I spoke to Linda, China is on zero for two weeks yeah, now. Yeah. I think yeah. That's our target. We try to be at zero. So mm. uh, it's very important for Hong Kong and China to get the border open because we have a lot of commercial interaction mm. business that we are doing. So it's a kind of inconvenience and really hurting our economy uh, if the even the border uh, between China and Hong Kong cannot be reopened. So that's our main focus and target. Exactly. Open. So, so at the moment, if you look at the borders, like for you living in, in Hong Kong, if you want to travel to China, so if you, for example, were going for business in China, you could cross the border because there is a border, even though yeah. Hong Kong yeah. is part of China. So there is still a border between Hong Kong yeah. and China. It's very but simple. Could, exactly. So you could cross over to if you're, are you having the same health pass as you have in China as well, where it's kind of go from green to yellow? To red or whatever they do? Um, not really, not really. We no. don't. But but tr as I mentioned, traveling to China is simple. But it, for me, from my home yeah. to China border, it's yeah. only one hour. Yeah. And but you can travel to China. You can do it we today. Can, we can, can but we but with uh, but with conditions. We need first of all to do the COVID test with negative yeah. result. Yeah. And then we need to apply a permit online. Yeah. And then upon arrival in China, we still need to be quarantined for 10 days. Wow. <laughs> and that's why we are still not willing to go to China. Exactly. I understand that. And then when it's you're coming back again to Hong Kong, do you need to quarantine? It will be 21 days. Oh, gosh. So that's a month, oh. one month quarantine, basically. Yeah. So because uh, I think the government is trying to play safe. And, yeah. it, and that, as I mentioned, that will be the target. We try to clear to zero as soon as yeah. possible. So they'd rather to be tough at the moment, uh, rather yeah. to have the number up and down. You know, and I think this is a wise way to do it because exactly. we are getting there very soon. I think, very yeah. very soon. And then, of course, we all talk about the vaccination, and we know True. that vaccination is getting slowly into in Scandinavia. They they are still on the high risk people. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, I I have a different situation here in Dubai where they are vaccinating mass on, basically. And I think we're close to almost 50% because they're now starting with vaccinating 40 plus and teenagers as well. Um, so my son has been given, he's 17, so he's been given an opportunity to get the vaccine uh, as well. And we use the Chinese vaccine, so uh, Sinopharm. And then we have Pfizer and AstraZeneca. And I think Sputnik V is coming in as well. So how is it with Hong Kong then? Yeah. Very similar in Hong Kong. We we actually kick yeah. off our vaccination program on the 26th of February. So it's about a month ago. Yeah. So we have now the number I have is the date that I am preparing the PowerPoint. And as of up to today, we have about yeah. 400,000 people vaccinated already. Okay. So you're going so very quickly. About 5%. 5%. Yeah. 
five wow. percent. Uh, but they try to have priority to the elderly people as well as th those people who have an urgent need to be vaccinated, like the frontline people, civil servant, mm -hmm. policemen, yeah. you know, medical yeah. staff, you know, things like yeah. that. But our government is forecasting that by the end of the year, we should have majority of the uh, population get okay. all vaccinated. And so, remind me how, how many people live in Hong Kong? We have 7.5 million. Okay. So you're looking in between Denmark and Sweden. Sweden is around 10 million, Denmark is around five. So mm -hmm. in between mm -hmm. somewhere there. It, but yeah. it has so much smaller space, I would say. Mm -hmm. then. True. But not dense. to forget, uh, if we get about half of our population to get vaccinated, yeah. which means traveling will be allowed. Okay. Uh, we don't need to wait for like a like hundred percent. No, exactly. I thought like before we're moving on to the next one, shall we play? We have a couple of videos to break off a yeah. little bit. And yeah. and also because things are changing even for Hong Kong in terms of what we mm -hmm. can offer them. So I thought we you sent me a video on the city yeah. and nature. So let's yeah. do that one. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll play it here. Yeah. Just a short one. Yeah. back to the slides yeah it's a very short one i've been told by the tourism board that i need to play this one to promote hong kong <laughs> no, no <laughs> <laughs> but, as, but as i mentioned since we are not traveling for almost like a year i really hope yeah. that the very short video can recall some memory of those yeah. people who have been to hong kong before all right exactly. so at least yeah. there's something little that that help you know to exactly. refresh your memory and yeah. even though we cannot be traveling. But of course, everybody is asking, when can we visit, you know, Hong Kong? We are always <laughs> waiting for reopening borders. And again, it's not only when we can visit, but also when, you know, Scandinavians can travel <laughs> outside as well, because as you know, we have travel restrictions too. So there is quite strict ones. I see I have a couple of Norwegians. We know that in Norway at the moment, you need to have a test for, I think mm -hmm. it's 24 hours before you arrive back to Norway and you need to quarantine in hotels. So it, that's very strict. So you have to do, uh, you know, hotel quarantine um, until the fourth day, I think it is, when you do your test again. And then Mark has a little bit of similar. You need to do, you know, 24 hour and quarantine. So, so of course, it's not many people traveling at the moment. But yeah. how do you see Hong Kong? Um, you know, what's the future mm -hmm. if we could um, do mm -hmm. that uh, <laughs> kind of uh, look into the future thing? Is this uh that is a million dollar question and everyone yes, wants to know yes. when the border is going to happen. Now, yeah. um, just to give a little bit of idea uh, of yes. what we are doing, so and then we can do an, an official forecast of the border open. Now, yeah. at the moment, the only exception is from China that they yeah. don't need to do any quarantine as long okay. as they are holding a negative COVID test result. Okay. All right. That's the only exception, but that's mm. not for tourists. It's only for businessmen, individual, or students. You know. Yeah. Uh, so not for leisure travel. Yeah. But not to forget that we actually have signed a travel bubble agreement with Singapore, like mm. about three months ago. That has been postponed due to the infected cases number up, up and down. So yeah. we can We are not too comfortable. Uh, to kick it off until the numbers are stabilized. So okay. what the government thinking is when our infected cases are under 10 mm. for like almost two weeks, that's the time we may resume the agreement and kick off the traveling between Singapore and Hong Kong. Okay. So as I mentioned, so we are getting there because when you look into the number, actually for the past seven days, we are under 10. So we just need another seven or 14 days, then we can really decide if the uh, travel bubble can be kicked off between, at least between Hong Kong and Singapore. Okay, so at least that bubble will start. Yeah, yeah, and then which means some traveling will be allowed for both countries, so we can be going out. Uh, 
But when we are talking about traveling, there will be some condition to be applied, like green passport, yeah. or you need to show a mutually recognized vaccination certificate, yep. as well as the negative test result. Yeah. Um, that we probably think that is a must. Now, for the other country, the Hong Kong government is still enforcing a 21 days quarantine at designated okay. hotels. So that's mm -hmm. why for long haul or even other country from Western side, I don't think the traveling will be resuming until uh, Q4 this year. Because, you know, when we are talking about a large number of vaccination is required because the population yeah. is far more than Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, so uh, even the Hong Kong Tourism Board, they have made an unofficial forecast. They predict we will kick off with Singapore and China in Q3. Okay. Mutual agreement. And then yeah. maybe some other Asia country to follow. Okay. Last so you see we'll... um, exactly. So you see yourself that Asia, you will start traveling to Asia and vice versa. So you know Singapore, mm -hmm. uh, you know maybe Thailand, maybe you know Thailand, all the yeah, other ones. Likely. Yeah, coming Very up. Likely. Yeah, but I think in Q four, for those have having business with China, they yeah. may be allowed it to come to Hong Kong uh, as long mm -hmm. as they can show the vaccination certificate. Uh, I don't think quarantine will be required by then. Okay. So and hopefully by Q4 as well, we maybe have hopefully. a worldwide a worldwide COVID pass yeah. or something, which is everybody's using. So it makes you know traveling yeah. easier as well. We hope so, for the uh, best. <laughs> exactly. So basically saying, bear in mind, we would be able to maybe come and visit Hong Kong in the end of this year. End of the year, and not to forget yeah. by then, if everything goes well. Uh, Hong Kong will have majority of the people uh, get vaccinated as well. Exactly. So, so that will be on on on, on the good side. Yeah. Um, actually, we have some uh, some new products which I think is yeah. really interesting, which we're going to talk about. That's all. Why don't we do one video on the neighborhood first, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. we show mm -hmm. that, and then we can talk into the really you know because you have two products, virtual activities, yeah. which I didn't know of, which I think is super interesting. Okay. So let's do the video first. something truly authentic and more immerse in all with 360 hong kong moments Enjoy. there we go and then um, uh, back to the slide because i think these ones here are really interesting what you're doing let's yeah. see there we got There's something so, related to local neighborhood as well exactly and mm -hmm. uh, and um and it's it's some virtual activity. So you need to explain me, uh, Michael, what are we having? Yeah, um, obviously we, as I mentioned before, uh, nobody is allowed to travel recently. However, for the corporate company, they still need to do a lot of meeting uh, by virtual webinar or online meeting. And we actually have quite a high demand from this company that they want us to organize some virtual activities during the break of the meeting. All right, so that's why we have planned a couple of new virtual tools and activity. But the aim is mainly to get uh, guests to have an opportunity to interact with local people as well in a very local neighborhood. So if we can be traveling, this can be due by face to faces. But unfortunately, as I mentioned, that we can't do it at the moment. So we do it online, virtually. Uh, so online. Exactly. So basically how it works is that 
you know, either a travel agent or even a company, like um, if there is a company who's doing a virtual meeting and they want to have like a break in the middle of the meeting and doing a virtual, you know, mm -hmm. wet market tour or Chinese cooking mm -hmm. class. Um, this is this is what you do with Denise. Is it that Denise White you said uh, who said uh, who's doing this? Yeah. 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 Denise is actually one of the local food lovers. She's been traveling a lot. She like she own her uh, own uh, cooking studio as well. She likes to yeah. promote healthy and nice food to local people. So we get her to conduct this virtual tour, not too long for three hours. Yeah. And then to start in her own neighborhood. Yeah. So obviously we start with ingredients. So she will bring uh, gases to one of the local wet market, start to pick the right ingredient through this online tour and okay. explain our culture, you know, because for Chinese people, everything must be fresh. Yeah. Because that's the focus. And then since she's been traveling a lot, she has her own recipe and yeah. her own a unique cooking style as well. All right. Okay. So that's why she will demonstrate and teach everyone how to cook as soon as all these ingredients has been purchased uh, yeah. in her own uh, cooking studio. Now, this... Okay. These two are need to be pre-booked. The reason is uh, we need to get all this technical, you know, IT prepared, as well yeah. as we want to send people what kind of ingredient will be required. So if your guests want to cook together on the other side, so yeah. they can get all these ingredients to be prepared in advance so they can cook at the same time. You know, cool. uh, I think... Uh, at least a uh, 14 days advance booking is required. Okay. And then we so need to nice have you... the time zone as well. Exactly. So basically, if there's a travel agent who wants to do this mm -hmm. as a virtual tour of Hong Kong, you know, mm -hmm. and, and invite uh, their um, clients or like doing a three hour, you know, cooking, or mm -hmm. it's a company, if, if a travel agent has a company who is doing an mm -hmm. online you know mm -hmm. uh, webinar or like mm -hmm. an online conference and they want to break up the conference you know like you normally do in conferences you have mm -hmm. evening activities or you know things right. like that now you can break up the conference with this actually three hour you know cooking things um everybody so they can prepare or even send their delegates you know the package of what they need so they can do it as well and and uh, so break it up a little bit so it's Good. both actually companies and travel agents or yeah. or even private people probably as well who can oh, yeah uh, if this is like a leisure group or family or five people they can still yeah. do it together Excellent. Yeah. I, I like that very much. I might even book it myself. Yeah, that's something more interesting. <laughs> and not to forget that you learn the culture as well. And yeah. there will be interaction between yeah. you and uh, Denise as well. If yeah. you have questions to ask about the cooking, you can answer you know, all the inquiries right away on the spot. Cool. Excellent. I like that. And then you have another one as well. You have yeah. another virtual tour as well. Yeah, yeah. This is even a more interactive uh, tour. Uh, and then we want to go to explore uh, Central. And the reason we picked this neighborhood is because it's a combination of new and old. And if you, okay. all, we all realize that Central is where all the sky scrapper yeah. commercial building located. Yeah. But with a 10 minutes walk, you go to another old town which we call upper central where you'll find a lot of like old store uh chinese drug store uh you know authentic tea houses so the guy will bring everyone to have a little walk along and the interesting thing is uh all the guests can even interact with the shopkeeper and the shop owner as well so it is more like a one hour tour to learn a little bit more of local life. Uh, that used to be to be conduct uh, face to face, but then we turned this to virtual as well. We just exactly. want to bring everyone to understand Hong Kong from different part of the world. All right. So, so a lot of interaction. And, and not to forget that, that we will contribute 2% of the booking fee to the heritage uh, conservation work in Hong Kong. Well, that's nice. 
So you also have, uh, but I think, as like I said, it's only an hour that tour as well. Yeah, so that might be yeah. more of a, um, a short break as well. Yeah, so even short companies break can do it. Or yeah. it could be for travel agents who wants to do, um, you know, something for the clients. In And of course, there has to be time zone uh, difference. So we need to be time zone friendly in one way. So, um <laughs> And that would be uh, exactly maybe a morning, you know, meeting yeah. or even like um, a morning virtual tour for, for travel agents as well and stuff like that. Yeah. So that that's yeah. um, I think it's really too. nice products. <laughs> it's really nice one. I like the cooking. Thank I'm, I, I'm, I like Thank food, you. so I, I like cooking food as well. <laughs> I can so, imagine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So why we do on the food? Why don't we do the great outdoors first before we start on yeah, the um, post-pandemic yeah, products here? Yeah. Yeah. See, there we go again, and I'll get back to your slides. Hang on, I'll start here. And um, of course, um, like we always talked about the earlier time as well, there is you know new things growing out of the pandemic. Right. We always see, right. you know, and also we can see consumers. If I go to on the Scandinavians, or I'd call them Scandinavians, but even for Norwegian, Danish. Swedish and even Finnish as well, that um, what you can see is people are looking for wanting to be more outdoor and they will still want activities, but they also true. want to do stuff together with the family or with friends, um, you know, maybe visit some places back where, they, you know, it's more about togetherness. It's more about, you know, um, being outdoor, do stuff together. And um, and I think even for Hong Kong, if you're looking at Hong Kong, I think the main thing we think about sometimes is sky <laughs> sky or high rises, yeah, tall yeah. buildings, uh, yeah. cramped city, lots of people. Trail, you know, like night market, yeah. you know, which is yeah. pretty standard. Yeah. But we we just want to let people know that we have the other side as well. Yeah. Instead of uh, obviously they can always go for a city do a big cram, but on some other days. There's still yeah. option for them to go somewhere countryside and to explore yeah. our little culture. Yeah. Uh, because Hong Kong, we used to, to be a fishing village. So we still have a lot of culture left from the old days. And when we also concern about the new travel trend as well, we call new normal yeah. because we yeah. think there may be a higher demand on those off beach tour, uh, such as hiking or beach tour 
uh, because travelers may be getting more aware of the green and sustainability vacation yeah. uh, uh, as to avoid some crowds and less people contact, or at least in the very beginning, right after the COVID, mm. you know, they may still be concerned about all the gathering. So even they go to travel, they may be uh, pick some of the tour that will be have less people's contact, more fresh air. And that's why we enhance and work on some of the product, uh, like one of the uh, the one that shown in the slide, that's to our outer island called Lama Island, which is very popular for their seafood. You know, it used to do be a very little fishing village. Yeah. Uh, uh, however, it's in a very European style because if you see all the houses in the island, they are only three-story building with painted in different colors. So yeah. it's like in Greece, you know, with all the white color, you know, bungalow as well. And oh. it will be a nice uh, and a mixture of hiking and walking. Uh, yeah. it will, it's a very easy walking and then you will pass by some temple which uh, have a very old history, more than 100 years old a nice beach in the middle of the hiking and to the end that will end up in uh, a sort of like uh, a seafood restaurant uh, enjoying very fresh seafood and a very reasonable price uh, okay. and the ferry from Hong Kong side to Lemma Island is only one hour okay that's what my next question actually how far is it from Hong Kong so you Not can do fine. it as a day trip you can yeah, actually yeah, stay in, in uh, Hong Kong, do a day trip, and even have dinner back in Hong Kong true, when you come true. back. And they depart every 30 minutes. The ferry is from the central. So it's very okay. convenient. Very so it's easy, uh, something a little bit offbeat, and then you can do it half day or full day. It's up to you. If you want to skip the uh, hiking, you can just yeah. do a little walk and then maybe visit a temple and then enjoy some seafood, and then you can come back uh, for okay. half a day. Okay, and so if someone wants to overnight, is it possible to do, is it accommodation or they can stay on or maybe do like one or two days or three days? In, uh, in, in the Lama Island, Island the, um, the accommodation won't be, uh, won't be too up to standard. It will be like those uh, bungalow style, but yeah. they don't really have a hotel there actually because it's a very tiny, it's a very tiny little island, outer island. Uh, but then but they still, they do have something like Airbnb, yeah. But, but not a hotel for sure. No, no, no. Okay, so you uh, can actually say no, the people, island side. Yeah, yeah. But if people want to do something different, you know, then yeah. they might want to stay a, yeah. a night or two. They can they, they still do it. So they can still do it. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And the next one we talked about as well was uh, yeah. kind of the hiking. You know, uh, yeah. and this one I really want to mention a bit because uh, we have actually. Uh, considered to be one of the best hiking track in Asia, and that's actually mentioned by Lonely Planet magazine as well as Travel Advisor. Now, this mm. Dragon Bat is located in within the urban city, so it's very easy accessible. And this is actually the most popular hike, even for Hong Kong people. It's very simple. It's in the middle of the city. Uh, transportation is not an issue, and no. with very nice uh, scenery as well. And then by the end of the hike, if you look to the uh, left hand side of the slide, then you can relax in a little village called Shek O, mm. where you can find nice bar and Thai restaurant and barbecue restaurant that mm. will be overlooking a beach as well. So it mm -hmm. will be a perfect hiking itinerary for yeah. half a day. For half oh, a day. Okay. And this is really recommended. Nice yeah. scenery. Really okay. lay back and stay away from the urban city. Okay, so where do you start from when you do this? Can you do it by yourself or do you need yeah, you to can do it by yourself? We, we actually, we can do a guided tour yeah. uh, by Destination Asia. We actually yeah. run this tour before. However, yeah. if you want to do it by your own, we can, uh, we are most delighted to send more information. You can even take the, uh, the subway, yeah. and one of the subway station and there will be a minibus that yeah. will drive you all the way to the uh, to the hiking site. Okay. So it's very simple. Okay. Within half an hour, you can be there. Okay, cool. So that's an easy, and this is probably not what people have been thinking about when they're thinking Hong Kong, because they think yeah. that it's a city break, more yeah. like uh, a force. So, 
actually this can extend your Hong Kong in, of course, doing what you do in Hong Kong in terms of inside the city <laughs> and explore. And, you know, it's a bit about the food. I think a lot of people go to Hong Kong because of the food and, you know, you maybe a little bit on the boat, you know, going out on the on the islands. And uh, here we go, two perfect trips as well to be outdoor, because like yeah. you said, people are probably going to ask for doing more outdoor trips. Um, at the same time, it can be a mix, you know, because if you are like staying for four to five days, it can be a mix to the city, get some excitement, shopping, and then yeah. in the middle of the day and in the middle of the week, then you can go a day for beach or hiking or yeah. Lama Island. So that will be yeah. a quite good mix, you know, and know a little bit more about Hong Kong as well. Exactly, getting some more to know about actually what Hong Kong is, except yeah. the whole, you know, uh, picture of it. <laughs> and um, and we say like of course there is the website there where they get everything about the update on the COVID for Destination True. Asia as well. Yeah. And then if someone wants the presentation, they can just email me or email to us, and we will send it to them. So if they want to have a look at it, um, and uh, let's see, I'll uh, stop there and um, be coming to an end of the all. And and Michael, thank you very much for doing this please. short update. You're um, welcome, Eric. Thank you, yeah, everyone, for joining our session today. <laughs> yes, yeah, and hopefully we can do an update when we're coming closer. And um, sure. I also let you know if, like I said, the two virtual tours was really, really good. So I think that is something uh, we might be, uh, you know, hoping some of the tour operators or even event companies can uh, take. Uh, in charge of. Exactly. Right. So I hope really seeing right? everyone, you know, exactly. hopefully for this year. <laughs> Definitely. And have a nice evening, Michael. You too. Okay, thank okay. you. Bye-bye.